Okay, we're here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Twitch. Oh, yay, Kate's here. Looks like we just got a, a new sub from Tarnished... Oh, my gosh. I'm awful. Tarnished Silver Mist. So thank you for that. Subscribing with Prime. Love it. You're the best. Making it possible. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So here we are. I'm Kelsey. Um, I'm going to be your... GM this evening, she, they. Um, I'm DMing something a little different on Ghostlight. Um, Ghostlight RPGs is a collective of theater artists keeping the lamp lit via remote role-playing adventures. Um, so we're playing Hot Guys Making Out, which is a passionate RPG by Ben Lehman. Um, we have changed it quite a bit for our purposes. We wanted to make sure that it was um, sort of making the statement that we feel comfortable with as a team, as well as making it so that it would be readable to an audience. So, um, yeah, so, so it's, a, it's been homebrewed a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so our characters are encouraged to get pretty frisky in the game if they want to, but we will not pursue physical role play without express verbal consent. So we've had a pretty good talk about it. We also have our safety dynamics. Everybody is able and um, hopefully willing to let us know if they don't feel comfortable with something in the game. Uh, we want to make sure that this is a safe, fun space, not a spooky, booky space. So... Uh, <laughs> So um, as we get started, I just wanted to give a special thanks to Haruzard underscore. He helped me troubleshoot and create the stream design today. And Ecat Carter for teaching me about storytelling perpetually with our podcast Spellbound and helping me organize here on Ghostlight and, and talking to everybody and stuff like that. Um, and I also wanted to thank all of you, you guys here in the cast, as well as you guys out there in the chat for joining today. Um, so I'm going to go clockwise. I want everybody to introduce yourselves so that everybody will know the gift of you as a human being, starting with you, Khalif. Just say who you are and what you're excited about in your life. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're happy you're here. Uh, Maria? <laughs> yes, and make out. It's been a long pandemic, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very thirsty. Um, and Darrington? Oh, you can't hear it at all? So we are having a slight technical difficulty. Oh. Just one moment. All right. Um, should we try? Should we test? Yeah. Sorry, just a second. Ryan's helping me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Darrington, will you try talking? Will you test test? Hi, it's me. I'm Darrington and I'm talking. Can you hear him? Maya K95? Yeah. Hi, Velvet Text. Okay, <laughs> Ghostlight RPG says, yep, we can hear. Okay, good. Hey. Awesome. Sorry, guys, we have to start our intros again. I Everybody got my awesome intro, and it was really good, and no one knew that our audio wasn't working because mine was. So um, if we're good... Okay, it's a little quiet, Kate says. Did you turn it off just now? Okay. All right. Let's go back to Khalif. Thank you all for your patience. Sorry, Khalif. Uh, yes. Uh, hi. 
I am Khalif J. Gillette, pronouns he, him, his. Um, I'm excited to be here because this is uh, my first time doing something with Ghost Light RPGs, uh, and I'm new to this avenue of performance. This is really excited to be here and to be <laughs> one of the hot guys making out. Yes. I want to be that. <laughs> All right, Anne Maria. Hi, I'm Maria Isabel Heiss. <laughs> Uh, he they pronouns and I'm so excited to also be a hot guy making out with all these hot guys and I am pretty new to ETRPG. I was uh, telling Kelsey oh, I don't know if I can game so uh, <laughs> I'm excited to play and uh, make out yeah <laughs> all right and Darrington Hi, my name is Darrington Clark. I use he, him, his pronouns. And if you are familiar with Ghostlight RPGs and have maybe been watching Zoa Stardust, then you have seen me, but that's the only thing you've seen me in because I too am very new to RPGs. Uh, but I've been so excited to explore all of these different mediums of performance with Ghostlight and I'm happy to be here too. It's another one of the hot guys are making up. Yes. All right, Puck, you're the only one that didn't get a test round. So let's see what you got. <laughs> Can you hear me? Am I am I hearable? Yes, I think all of you are. It was the Zoom audio wasn't on. It was my fault. <laughs> well, my name is Puck. I use they them pronouns. Um, I am a jeweler sculptor and an avid role play enthusiast. I have no limits to my role play mediums. Uh, tabletops are always a plus. I was very excited to uh, get this invite for Ghostlight RPGs. So thank you very much for having me. Um, let's make it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. All right. So scene change. Um, so it's Spain, the late 1930s, probably early 1940s. We're not going to get too strict on the time zones. Uh, the country was recently ravaged by a vicious civil war between the democratically elected Republicans and the rebel fascist forces of Francisco Franco. Even away from the battle lines, the fascists massacre thousands for suspected political deviance, while increasingly radical Republicans execute aristocrats and clergy as collaborators. Buoyed on both sides by a steady stream of foreign arms and foreign soldiers, the war rages on, leaving ruin and sorrow in its wake. Lost in this sea of violence and chaos, Gonzalo Hidalgo is merely one of thousands orphaned by the war until one cloudy night when everything changes. A sexy, taciturn man in a dark suit arrives at the orphanage in the middle of the night and whisks the young man away to a posh boarding school in the Pyrenees. Please introduce your characters, uh, starting with you, Khalif. Hello, I am Fulgencio. <laughs> and Fulgencio is a school teacher new to town. And uh, next, Honore. I am Honore, and I am the daddy of the manor. <laughs> and I'm here to take in a uh, young to me care for him and uh my handsome man servant Jean, so gives me great assistance <laughs> and Jean. Bonjour, my name is john i um am third generation of a butler for honori and i um my grandfather came here to flee the cruel aristocrats of the paris and here I am. I have never been more happy to be here in my life. Uh, thank you for my master for bringing me in every day. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Gonzalo. And I am Gonzalo Hidalgo. I'm a war orphan and I'm so grateful to have been taken to a place where I can grow and mature and learn. And all I want is to see an end to the war and the violence and maybe find somebody to complete the other half of me. So fast forward six years, uh, Gonzalo, then a teenager, is now a young man. A uh, car races through the dark mountain roads, co coming from his boarding school in the Pyrenees, uh, crisscrossing through what used to be dangerous fascist and Republican territories. Pelted by rain and gravel, it finally arrives at a noble house, 
well-kept and ancient. In front of the house stands a beautiful man, his eyes distant, his mouth frowning slightly. Next to him, an attractive older manservant holds an umbrella to keep the rain off his master's long, flowing hair. Uh, Maria, what is Honore wearing? has a very nice tailored suit, while a black today. I feel Honore would also have a nice couple of building, silver stitching, um, and Yes, beautiful. So the driver opens Gonzalvo's door. The young man understands that he has arrived in his new home. Does he dare give voice to his feelings? In this remote territory, he can find shelter here, but can he launch his life? Who is this mysterious man, and why did he feel obliged to care for Gonzalvo after his parents' death? So just to give a little bit of insight to the audience, um, we are going to be using a different kind of game mechanic today. Um, and we are going to be drawing cards. So um, we have some pretty cute cards here to use. Um, we'll introduce a threat um, at each scene and it will be everybody's goal in the drawing to be able to minimize that threat, de-escalate it and make it go away. And then the story can continue. So. Uh, we are having a welcome luncheon in Gonsalvo's honor. Honore has invited Fulgencio, the new school teacher, to introduce them both and help them both make friends. The formal dining room is laid with the finest silver and porcelain, and Nina, the maid, serves while Jean, Jean, looks on. How does Jean feel about all of this? I feel very um, uh, excited for a new body in the house, um, especially since I know what it's like to have to, uh, my family fleeing a dangerous situation. So I'm very welcoming to young Gonzalo. Welcome to our home, young master. I hope to serve you as well as I do, Hanori. I love that. And I wasn't expecting it. Okay. <laughs> but there is still, between Gonzalo and Honore, palpable tension in the air. Um, Gonzalo, of course, is grateful for the patronage, but wants to know why he was cared for financially for so long and in such a great way. Uh, the resources like this during a war are not easy to come by. Uh, Fulgencio doesn't know any of these men or their situation, and he feels like he might be gate crashing something that uh, could have been better left to just the, the three of them. So um, I'm going to start our threat here. So our first threat is... Why did Honore step up as Gonsalvo's guardian when his parents were killed? So, um, let's begin. Are we ready? Gonsalvo, you yeah. have a four of diamonds. Four of diamonds. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and so, you, yes, you get to make a standard action. Mm -hmm. um, Gonzalo, seated at the table, will take everything in, the beautiful silverware, the fantastic garments that everyone has on, the beautiful stoic mansion, and try his best to say, I'm overwhelmed with the courtesy and the generosity, but I'm sure you understand that I have a couple questions. Nore, you have an eight of clubs. So you too can take a standard action. And I would comfort you. I hope welcome in my I offer him a beverage nice cider that uh present. I hope you like the flavors, um, and it comforts you in this time. I've been very lonely, and even though I have Jean to comfort me, attend to me, I have been uh, wanting someone to impart my care to. This is why I've cared. And uh, Nina hurries forward with a bottle of this handmade cider and lays down a serviette and a glass and then pours it for everyone. Excuse me. Yes, excuse me. Excuse me. So next is, ooh, a face card. Um, so for 
Fulgencio, we have a face card where you can de-escalate the threat. So there is clearly confusion here. Are you going to do a moment of passion or are you going to do a support action? Hmm. 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 I believe a moment of passion. Um, yes. Uh, there is much love here in the air, but um, I think it's time to drink more than we are giving off this strange love that I don't understand fully. I love it. All right, next card. A nine of clubs. John, standard action. Um, I'll step forward to the table, even though I'm not like sitting at the table, I'm standing next to it. And um, I will ask Nina for a glass and say, we oui, let us have a toast to our new situation. Um, maybe we can all learn to um, coexist together in uh, harmony. Perfect. Gonzalo, an ace. Okay, so this is where the threat will advance. So I'm going to advance it for you and everybody will have a chance to respond. Um, I think that Nina standing here um, is a little bit overwhelmed with all of this tension. Um, and she says, oh, why are you acting like nothing's happening? I was just so excited to see his son <laughs> and runs away crying. All right. Um, everybody has a chance to respond. What does everybody want to do in uh, in player order? Let's say that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Gonzalo, still holding his glass with the cider, is so surprised that he accidentally drops it and it spills all over him. Oh. Okay. And Anori. I uh, take my. Napkin from my lap and go over to Gonzalo to to wipe some of the cider away. And I explain, um, are you aware of your parentage, Gonzalo? I feel we have things to explain to you. And Fulencio? I. I go, I go over and I uh, comfort Gonsalvo in this moment and offer support um, and offer him to come to my office at any time to talk about this. Oh, I love that. Okay. So let's move on. Face card. Wait, who's next? So we had Jean. That, Gonsalvo was that, so Honore. Absolutely. So on a face card, everybody can either do a moment of passion or support. And Maria is able to choose um, from their moments of passion and support. It's specific to each character um, between a physical intimacy or providing resources to resolve the issue. So I like this moment to take direct passion but only if it will comfort Gonsalvo may I embrace you mm. dear Gonsalvo yes you may yes I hold Gonsalvo to me and comfort him you are from a very important lineage and I've invited you here teach you how to use your great So history is, is rife with heroes and amazing things, and you have been lost, lost in this horrible war. Mm. Please come to me. Um, Fulgencio, you see this embrace. It's a nine of spades. I will make 
small talk. Uh, does anyone know where, where this cider comes from? I don't. I don't understand the flavors. There's there's a tinge of honey, but also there's a tinge of. Uh, is is that orcs blood? I don't. I don't know what that is. Yes, it's, it's quite delicious, but I don't understand. There is a spice in the cider. I don't. I don't know if it's an orc. That you you do have a very uh, knowledgeable palate, though. So. Um, eight of diamonds, Jean. Um, I will um, walk around the table, having picked up the abandoned cider mug or carafe, and I will um, pour Gonzalo another drink, and say. Um, most importantly, Gonzalo, we want you to realize your own potential that you have within yourself. And this is why you are here. And um, more than that, I think that um, to be free of the constructs of war is a very fortunate thing to be. Um, and I'll fill his glass up a little bit. And uh, then I will look at... Um, uh, uh, I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, I'll step to Flintia and I'll say, um, and this is a lavender that you are tasting. It uh, comes from the country. Nice. All right. Gonzalvo. And I'll also say, since this thread is about you, if you feel that like you are satisfied with all of this, then we can say the threat is over. But if you feel like we need to de-escalate further, feel free to keep going. Okay. Um, so you have a three of hearts, and hearts are you can do whatever you want. Let your heart decide. Okay. Well, first, Gonzalo rushes to clean whatever he can from the spill. It, I don't think it affected too many other people. It was just mainly him, but the cloth and the comforting really helps him and dries him off a little bit, but uh -huh. still just a little bit flustered. All of this talk of heroes and lineage and potential. Uh, he says, I I don't know. I, my parentage is such a mystery. There was so little that I have left with me. I, he turns to Honore and says, I hope if all of this is true, then you'll have some patience with me as I try to figure it out. Mm. And I would say Nina walks back into the room at this point and um, has composed herself and she says, I'm so sorry about that. It's just when, when your father, when we found out we'd never see your father again, it it was so hard. And uh, we'll draw a six of diamonds, and that is for Honore. I'm gonna try to make some change. I. It's all so overwhelming. I wasn't quite ready to tell you everything about your past, Gonsalvo, and I know it's overwhelming for you. I want to impart something to you. So your father was a dear, dear friend of mine and uh, schoolmates. Uh, this is a ring your father cherished. I want you to 